Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my kitchen. Ooh. What happened to my scallion? Oh, this needs investigating. Hang on a second. What happened? Oh my god, it's like... Oh, is it dry? Oh, I forgot to water it. I feel so bad. So I started growing scallions because I didn't want to go out as much and I use scallions a lot. But then when I started growing them, I started getting attached to them. So I didn't want to eat them anymore because you know, I kind of raised it. I'm like a scallion parent now, but I think I got to eat them. Otherwise it's going to die. Oh, it'll be a sad, delicious day coming up. Anyway, back to this dish we're making. This is going to blow a lot of people's socks off. Okay. So when you are making this dish for your friends, family, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, whomever, make sure they're wearing socks because you'll want to see them get blown off. It's quite a sight. What we're making today is called Dongbei Da La Pi. Basically it's Northeast noodles. Now in Northeast China, they eat a lot of meat. They eat a lot of noodles, a lot of wheat, a lot of starch. And this is such a popular dish because it combines all of that and and we're making the noodles from scratch. I'm gonna teach you how. It's not hard. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so, so good. Now, of course, if you don't wanna do any of that, you don't wanna make the noodles from scratch, that's fine. You can go to an Asian grocery market and just buy some noodles and then just add the sauce and veggies if you want, but what fun is that? Let's make these glass noodles. Cause I'm telling you, ain't much more exciting things in the world than hand making your noodles. Okay, I really need to get out more, but I think that's pretty true. Here's what you're gonna need. Some chicken bouillon, four cloves of garlic, couple of eggs, peanut butter, sesame paste, wasabi oil, that's a new ingredient we're introducing in this recipe, light soy sauce, dark Chinese vinegar, sesame oil, oyster sauce, some cornstarch, some woodier mushrooms if you want, some cucumbers, some carrots, four ounces of lean pork. You're gonna need one cup of either mung bean starch or potato starch. I prefer potato starch. And you're gonna need a cake pan. So you can use whatever size you want. And to make this dish, unlike most other noodle dishes, we make the noodles last. Teaspoon of cornstarch, teaspoon of soy sauce, tablespoon of water, pork goes in, and we're going to let that sit for 10 minutes and this is going to tenderize the pork. Get a couple of eggs. Quarter teaspoon of cornstarch. And just let it cook into like a thin crepe. I'm gonna take it and cut it into strips as well. And the thing is, you don't need to do all this. Like if you don't want eggs, you don't need to add eggs. If you don't want wood here, you don't need to add it. I just want a different variety of color and textures in my noodles. So you can add this. Some people also like to add tofu strips, or if you want to add some green peppers or whatever your favorite vegetables are, you can add them. For me, eggs, wood here, carrots, cucumbers. All right, we're getting close. This dish, like a lot of other ones we've been cooking, it's a lot of prep, but it comes together very quickly because we don't need to cook the vegetables, but we do got to cook the pork. So, medium high heat, couple splashes of oil. And it's gonna get a little sticky because it's gonna have cornstarch on it. Don't worry about that. It's gonna taste good, that's all that matters. Don't be afraid of potentially sticky situations when you're cooking. And that's why we're adding a little extra oil. Keep moving it, otherwise it's gonna stick to the pan. This is gonna taste. So freaking mwah. And if you want your meat a little darker at this point, you can add about a tablespoon of dark soy sauce to give it some color. For me, this is good. All right, that's done. Take it out of the pan and set it aside. 
Okay, now let's make our sauce. And as with so many things in this recipe, everything is customizable. So if you want it less sweet, more spicy, less salty, whatever you want, you can adjust that. But I'm gonna give you exactly what I put in my sauce and my sauce will be spicy, it will be sour, it will be savory. And I wanna just pop in with flavor. So mine's gonna be very aggressively seasoned. So two tablespoons of light soy sauce, two tablespoons of Chinese black vinegar, two teaspoons of oyster sauce, half a teaspoon of chicken bouillon, ho <laughs> ho. Now this wasabi oil, this'll get ya, all right? But I love this, so I'm doing two teaspoons. You should start with maybe half or maybe one. Don't do two. I'm a little crazy. I love wasabi. Two teaspoons of sesame oil, the four minced garlic, very important. Tablespoon of sesame paste, and a couple of teaspoons of peanut butter. So here's the thing, if you can't find sesame paste, just use peanut butter. If you have peanut allergies, use the sesame paste, but you're gonna add some sugar to your sauce. Since uh, peanut butter does have a lot of sugar in there already, I'm not gonna add any more sugar. Just make sure that mixes really, really, really well. You should heat up the sesame paste and the peanut butter so it melts easier, but I like being the human blender. There we go, that's our sauce. Oh. Oh, I'm partially floating right now from how good that is. Now, the final part is make our noodles. Get a big container and fill it up with cold water. Now, fill your wok up with water. And if you're wondering why there's a triangle symbol on the bottom of my wok, is because I left half a sandwich grilling there for longer than I should have. And by a long time, I mean smoke detectors going off and almost a sprinkler, I think. And we're gonna heat this till it's around 170, 180 degrees. So if you have a food thermometer, it's a good time to use it. If you don't, just heat the water up till there's bubbles forming on the bottom. And while the water's heating, we're gonna make our noodle mixture. So the cup of starch, put it into the bowl. And then we're gonna add a cup and a half of water. So however much starch you use is 1.5 times that of water. Next, we're gonna add a teaspoon of salt. And what that's gonna do is like putting Air Nikes on our noodles. It's gonna give it an extra bounce. And this will not be fun to mix. And you'll be doing this a lot because the cornstarch will sink to the bottom very, very, very often. Okay, set this aside. And by bubbles, I don't mean these little wimpy micro bubbles. Wait till the bubbles become a little bigger. All right, looks good. And then turn the heat on low so I can kind of retain this temperature. Wake your mixture up, grab your cake pan. And whatever size cake pan you're using, make sure the mixture covers the bottom of the pan in a thin little layer. Not too thin, if it's too thin, it's gonna break apart, but not too thick. So you really gotta control it. It's just like, like a little much, a little much. And for me, almost half a cup is what I like to use for my nine inch pan. And then put it on the top. And now we're just gonna twirl it around slowly and shift it so whenever you see where it's a little uneven, where it needs a little more, just send it that way. And we're twirling it because we want it to heat evenly. And just keep doing this until the excess moisture on the top of this little crepe we're making almost disappears. Doesn't need to be completely dry, but it can't be moving around. So at this point, I have still just a little bit of moisture left on the top. Okay, now it's dry. As soon as it's barely dry, dunk it into the hot water and start twirling again. And we're gonna keep it here until this little crate turns transparent. You see how it's turning transparent right now? And as soon as it does that, and that's gonna take not long at all, we're gonna take it out, dump out the water, take it to our cold bowl of water, and dunk it in. Now, take a small spoon and just grab an edge, like start moving the edge in gently, just so you get a little opening. When you have an opening, put your fingers in, lift the sides. If you did this right, you don't need to be too gentle with it. It shouldn't break. It's just easier when there's water in here, so you can lift it up, and there you go. Glass, crystal clear noodles. You can read a magazine through them. You can pull them, they're not gonna break. They're stretchy, stretchy, transparent noodles. And soak these in water a little bit, and they're ready to eat. So for our recipe, we're gonna make three of these. Take our noodles, fold it in half, 
and then fold it in half again and just cut it into strips. Don't cut it too thin because a characteristic of this dish is not thin noodles. Not too thin, not too wide. Congratulations, you just make glass noodles. Now, you can make your plate look really pretty. That doesn't look half bad. There you go. Northeast Dalapi. That looks pretty and it's gonna taste even better. But make sure you cook it to this step and bring it out like this so that everyone can take some photos, you know, tag yeah. Show the dish and yourself some Instagram love, you know what I'm saying? Now we're actually ready to eat this dish. Take the sauce that you made, give it a little mix and dump it on. And for good measure, if, if you want, no one's twisting your arm here, a little chili oil, two chopsticks, and mix all this together. Noodles, veggies, meat, and mix it good. Yeah, baby. Oh, so beautiful. Mmm, noodle texture, perfectly bouncy. Oh my God, oh, so good. Mmm, that may be a little too good. Wow. Okay, if you don't want to make the noodles yourself, go to the store, buy some mumbi noodles or potato noodles, use the same sauce, use the same ingredients. You're gonna have yourself a masterpiece. If you do want to make it yourself, you can use potato starch, you can use sweet potato starch, you can use mun bean starch. Only starch you can use is corn starch. Also, what I found was that mun bean starch was the easiest to turn into noodles. It's really, really, really simple. It heats evenly, it comes off evenly, it's very, very easy to do. Potato starch is a little trickier, but the texture is gonna be much better, much more chewy. Couple of vital ingredients though, wasabi oil. This is like one of the reasons I love this dish. I love wasabi oil on this dish. This is the only time I ever use this ingredient is in this dish. Also, sesame sauce, peanut butter, it needs a little nuttiness and creaminess and that totally brings it. Trust me guys, go try out this dish at home, no one. No one's not gonna love it, nobody. If they don't love it, they're just jealous of you. That's all it means. As always, all the ingredients are listed below. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we cook again, see you later.